Hi there. This video is going to show you how to create an S3 bucket that is running locally that you can use to run your Corso backups um, to that local bucket. Uh, you may have checked out the blog post. If not, it's linked down below, which talks about your different storage options for Corso. Um, the big thing is that you can uh, store it any kind of S3 compatible storage with some caveats about uh, uh, storage classes that are supported on AWS. Um, but this is just covering the min IO portion of like, Hey, let's just run this S3 bucket locally. So, um, let's start. You can run min IO, um, just as a process on your own machine, but we're going to run inside a Docker container for a million reasons, but also because, uh, you know, we can just get it down to one command to get it up and running. Um, otherwise you have to like go into the min IO interface and say, okay, create the bucket and all the other pieces. So we can just say. Uh, what are these, what, what's going on here? We're making the directory for the Minao data. We're saying, go ahead and run this thing, naming it and giving it this default um, authentication, right? If you're actually, if you actually want to run a, a Corso backup that's longstanding, you will probably want to set, uh, you know, actual uh, credentials there. I already had Minio downloaded, so it just uh, is up and running right away. So next, the separate tab, because we'll leave this running in this tab, we're going to export that authentication data that we just um, set up. And then we'll go ahead and create our bucket. And I'm going to call this bucket uh, Corso Backup. And then I'm also going to change its endpoint, right? So it's not trying to go to AWS. It's just trying to go locally here to create that bucket. And boom, it's created. Now, um, you saw me export the default access for that min.io instance. Uh, what I'm not going to do on screen here is export the um, authentication that we need for uh, the Microsoft side. So, you know, of course, it has to be able to go and reach your Microsoft 365 data. So I've already exported the uh, secret and access key for uh, the Microsoft side um, separately. Um, since even for my demo instance, I don't really want to share that on screen. Um, so um, now we're able to go ahead and initialize that request or initialize our um, course or repository within that bucket. So that's going to look like this. Oops. Doubling up on um, my dot slashes here. Not good. So um, this command is going to be Corso repo init, right? We're, we're doing it into an S3 and we're giving it the bucket name. We're giving it the same bucket name that we gave out that we just set. And then right because we're doing this locally, we're going to disable uh, TLS and then we're going to give it our endpoint. Now, one thing that did actually confuse me a little bit when I was running this previously is I had set these two values in the Corso config file and I expected that, you know, Corso repo init would just obey what was in the config file. The thing about that is that the point of the repo init or the repo connect command is that they are going to create that config file for future connections. So even if you, if you have one established already, because you were messing around doing other stuff, um, it's not, it's not going to respect that disabled TLS or whatever else in that config file. It's, it's going to store that based on what we put in, in this command. So you have to put them in this command flags. And yeah, that'll initialize uh, that bucket. And then we can go ahead and run a backup, which you'll, you'll see in some other videos. That'll run just like normal because now this endpoint and stuff will be stored.